She is America's most decorated gymnast. Five Olympic medals, two world championship all-around titles, two national championships, and 38 international gold medals. Shannon Miller, the 19-year-old gymnastics sensation from Edmond, Oklahoma, came to worldwide prominence after capturing five medals, including a silver in the individual all-around competition at the 1992 Olympics in Barcelona, Spain. Her beginnings have a much humbler origin. It was at the age of eight that Shannon would meet Steve Nuno, the renowned women's gymnastics coach who would help Shannon fulfill her dream of Olympic competition. Actually, the first time I met Steve was in Moscow, and I was there just as a, for a training camp, and I was only eight years old, and I didn't really know he was from Oklahoma. She kept catching my eye as I was watching the Russian girls, and I saw this one little girl who was so petite, she was just little, little, and she was getting so frustrated every time she took her turn. She'd come back crying, and she was just frustrated, and I, I said, you know, there's a little girl with a lot of determination, but she just, the Russians were trying to throw her through double layout somersaults and, and the full twisting double backs, and she couldn't even do a double twist, really. And so uh, I thought it was amusing in one way, but I, I saw her and I felt like, you know, here's a girl that's frustrated because she wants to do it very, very well. And she wants to do it as well as a Russian kid, but she's, she's just as embarrassed that she can't do it. And she wants to do it. She's a very talented kid. And uh, that turned out to be Shana Miller. Absolutely, it was fate that brought Shana Miller and I together in, in 1986, I mean, 10 years ago. Uh, because, I mean, who, who would ever think that two people from Oklahoma would even meet uh, in Moscow, and which was the Soviet Union then, before Perestroika. I never really spoke with her mother about coming to my club or, or ever really talking because I didn't, I didn't teach that level of gymnasts. I was teaching elite kids pretty much solely. And when I came back to Norman, Oklahoma, uh, about two weeks later, uh, her mother was there at my doorstep uh, asking if they could join our gym. Steve Nuno's Dynamo Gymnastics in Oklahoma City would now become Shannon's new home. Four years and thousands of hours of training later, 12-year-old Shannon Miller qualified to compete at the 1989 U.S. Olympic Festival in Oklahoma City. Well, Shannon Miller's really national debut was in 1989. It's really where she turned the corner at being one of the top gymnasts in the country. So in 1989, when the Olympic Festival became the Junior National Championships, the first and only time it's ever been that, uh, the Caroli Six Pack came in, it came into town. And it was, it was held right here in Oklahoma City, which was a huge event for Oklahoma City. And people knew about this little girl, Shannon Miller, was pretty good, but they didn't know, you know, to what level, whether she was even going to be in the meet. Well, she was ranked as one of the top competitors, but she had never been in the junior international competition itself because she was always too young. Shannon just did a phenomenal job and won the gold medal on the uneven bars in the final round and placed third all around next to and broke up the Caroli six pack. There was six girls there and she was the only one. She was third and on the rest there was three Carolis in front of her and three in back of her. And right then, uh, everyone took notice that this girl was one of the top competitors in the world. The 12-year-old walked away with the bronze in the women's individual all-around competition and a silver medal in the women's team competition. The medals were Shannon's first in a major nationally televised competition, 
but the road to victory wasn't an easy one. So in 1989, Nuno hired Peggy Liddick as balance beam coach and floor exercise choreographer. Peggy's been great. She has um, brought great things to my gymnastics. Um, she works mostly on the beam and floor choreography, but with those two events, she's done wonders. <laughs> um, I can't imagine what she thought the first time she saw me. Well, I first saw her at one of the elite national meets. Um, back in 88, and <clears throat> I was very impressed with her. Um, a little rough on the edges. She, she was a, a trickster, I would call her. Um, 11 years old, 10, 11 years old, had the difficulty of any of the senior national team members at the time, if not more, but was, uh, like I said, a little rough. Um, just the feet weren't right, the knees weren't quite straight, and um, the presentation on her dance wasn't quite there. I knew she had a lot of potential and just, just like kind of like a diamond in the rough, just needed a lot of polishing. Okay, hold on, I didn't like that cartwheel. You, did, you had too much bobbing going into it and then you couldn't control it on the last half and you pulled it up pretty good, but I, I've detected a deduction and I just, I can't take it. That's right, go on. All right, Sam. That's good. Very good. The polishing worked. Six days a week, six to seven hours a day, Shannon trained for the Olympics in Barcelona. Up to this time, the amount of international competition she had faced was limited, so Coach Steve Nuno developed a European campaign. So going into, this was nine months or almost uh, ten months prior to the Olympic Games, I knew that Shannon was just on the rise. And I wasn't sure what the other girls were doing, but they had been champions for a while now. Shannon was hungry. So I decided to put together an international plan that was going to have Shannon Miller get some exposure in the European uh, international gymnastics world. So we went to Italy. She won the, the Catania Cup. We went to Switzerland, and she won the Swiss Cup. She went to the Arthur Gander meet, which is on the other side of Switzerland, and won that meet and earned two tens, one ten on the balance beam. The medals were adding up, and the Olympics in Barcelona were just around the corner. Then, a slip on the uneven bars and a devastating injury, a broken elbow. But just a few weeks later, she mounted a comeback at the Olympic trials and won the competition. I made I'd made the team in 92 it was kind of uh, I guess I was kind of relieved to just be on the team but then it was like oh my gosh now I have to compete but the storybook ending wasn't over the 15 year old became the most decorated Olympic gymnast in history overnight she went from local girl to a worldwide celebrity the Olympics definitely changed my life um, going into the Olympics you know, a few people wanted my autograph here and there, and I talked to the media every now and then, just kind of about being on the team and competing and stuff. Then afterwards, it was just amazing, the response. You know, um, not just there, I guess, but when I came back home, you know, they had like a huge parade in Oklahoma, and they were all really excited and everything. And I got asked to do all these media things, and <laughs> everywhere I went, I got to sign autographs and things like that. So it was, it was quite overwhelming at first, but I got used to it pretty quick. I think the single facet that I've seen change in Shannon Miller is her belief in herself. You know, she was such a shy young child uh, early on, criticized mercilessly about her shyness and that she was just uh, didn't didn't want to say things about anything really uh, especially about herself very modest very too too modest painfully shy but what happened is she as she started gaining all of these awards and all of these uh, competition wins and she started gaining more confidence in herself and she started believing uh, what she was, the way that she was training, and she was able to talk more about her successes. And after the Olympic Games, she still, she had no idea 
what she had done. I still don't believe she knows. What a tremendous feat. No one will know how good Shannon Miller is until after this Olympic Games. How, how big winning five Olympic medals is until you go to another Olympics and somebody doesn't do it. I mean, if she's set the standard and the norm, who's going to do five medals? I don't know if Shannon Miller can do five medals. She could win a gold medal this time, and that's what we're after. But she's changed to the point where she really believes in herself. And I think it shows in her performances now even more. She's a young lady with a lot of confidence. I know 10 years from now, I'll look back and, you know, I'm sure I'll be a lot more amazed and excited about it. <laughs> but right now, I think I'm too busy looking forward, especially to this Olympic Games, to really think about what's happened in the past. Since that time, she has limited her involvement to two children's charities. The two main ones that I've chosen are the Children's Miracle Network for the Children's Hospital and um, also the Red Ribbon Campaign for Drug for Youth. Straight in. There you go. All right. Swing up. Back. Up. Nice. There we go. Okay. A little close in on the ginger, a real nice swing. That had a good rhythm to it. A little more tap on the ginger, okay? With the Olympics in Atlanta just a year away, Shannon helped Team USA take the bronze medal at the 1995 World Championships with a sprained ankle. She competed and won with a torn stomach muscle, screws in her elbow, and most recently, a pulled muscle in her right forearm and an injured wrist. She doesn't have a broken leg or she doesn't have any, you know, big major thing. It's all these little, uh, I call them overuse injuries. And it's just like any professional athlete or, or any athlete at a high level. Um, the constant repetition and um, at this particular time of the year, there's no time to rest. Rest is the, is, would be the proper prescription, but it's not an option. In some ways, I think I do push myself a lot harder than others do but um you know that's just kind of the way I am and that's the way I am in everything that I do even in school and other activities um I love competition in everything I do <laughs> and I love to succeed in everything I do so I'm usually gonna work hard to do it <laughs> well I was being interviewed one time by uh, a magazine and, and they were they were saying oh how can you make these little girls get out on the floor and compete injured and this and that and and I just looked at him and I said wait a minute these these little girls even though they're you know 14 to 19 years old these girls that are gonna make this Olympic team they are the professional athletes in their sport and so you look at um, I used the example of, of Emmett Smith okay we're in the Super Bowl he's got a pulled hamstring you know what are you gonna do you need him you know you're not gonna put him in so he goes in the football game with a pulled hamstring scores a touchdown he's a hero Barry Switzer is the greatest coach on earth but then you turn around and, and ask us how we can put Shannon in a meet, you know, injured. Well, first of all, it's her choice. This is what she wants. Um, she doesn't want to be injured, but she wants to do her best. So, you know, we will prepare her the best we can around that injury to not further injure it, but yet still help her realize her dreams. On June 7th, 1996, Shannon won the National Gymnastics Championship all-around title with a sore wrist the injury that had kept her out of competitions all season. With an overall score of 78.38, Coach Nuno opted to petition onto the Olympic team with the score of the championship and skip the Olympic trials in order to give Shannon's wrist some additional time to heal. After the Olympic trials, Shannon's earlier score was good enough to keep her number one on the U.S. women's gymnastics team. But is it worth it all? The injuries, the hours of training. Um, yeah, there's been times you know that you have a rough day and you think well is all this worth it <laughs> but you know then you're reminded and reminded pretty quickly that um well other things that you've gotten to do like you know travel all over the world um you know different countries different people um do exciting things that most 19 year olds haven't ever done and possibly never will be able to do and really it